yes, God. We come now as humble as we know how. Amen. We want to simply say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For every good and perfect gift. We thank you for every mountaintop experience. And we thank you for being with us. Even when we're in the valley low. And it is right now, Lord, that we ask. That you forgive us of our sins. Cast them into the sea of forgiveness. Wash us whiter than snow. And simply speak, Lord Jesus, speak. Hide me behind that old rugged cross. So that your people hear a word from you. Amen. So we simply ask you to speak. Lord Jesus, speak. Give us a few crumbs from your table. Give us a heart to receive. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to continue to smile on Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Bless us now. And it is in Jesus' a strong and matchless name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Matthew chapter 4, 23a. And Jesus went about all of Galilee of the Gentiles. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 For a few moments, I want to encourage us from a subject. Ain't no stopping us now. All right. Come on. Ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. Slap your neighbor on the back here side and say we got the groove. Ain't no stopping us now. And for me, even though the race may be difficult, as disciples, our plan is to finish and perfect what God has started in us. Tell your neighbor, you can't stop me. Tell your other neighbor, you cannot stop me. McFadden and Whitehead recorded Ain't No Stopping Us Now in 1978. And it was released in 1979. This song, my brothers and my sisters, served as encouragement. Well. And it was about succeeding without being affected by the disadvantages that life throws at us. Mm. It was widely interpreted to be about the experience of the African American people. And when it became a hit, Mother Ryan, it became referred to as the New Black National Anthem. The lyrics, they let us know that there have been many things that have held us down. But it looks like things are fairly Coming around. Yeah. I know we've got a long way to go in BC. Yes, 
And will we end up? I don't know. But we won't let anything hold us back. We may have been broken, but we're putting ourselves back together. We're polishing up our act. If you felt that we've been down before, I want to let you know something. We're not going to be held back anymore. So don't you let nothing HMBC stand in your way. I want you all to listen. Listen to every word that I say. Ain't no stopping us now. Because we are on the move. We have all at one time or another poured our heart and soul into ministry. All right. We've all experienced happiness as we have engaged the difficulties of the ministry. All right. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have all encountered trouble that has led us to struggle. Because, let's be real today, the road is not easy. All right. Nor is it attractive all the time. As we have engaged the discipleship process and we have pressed our way towards an overflow, we have all been opposed by contrary people. We've had to face in burdened circumstances. And on rare occasions, we stood toe to toe with the adversary himself. Uh -huh. Let's be honest with one another on today. These negative influences or situations that come to slow us down and to break us down sometimes have caused us to be discouraged. Amen. And when we become discouraged, we become somewhat disconnected. And we are disconnected due to the fact that we are broken. Yes, and when we are broken, some of us have stated, I'm throwing away my HMBC membership card. And I'm forgetting my membership number. We have considered minimizing our involvement with certain people. We have promised to quit altogether. And we have declared to ourselves with what we wanted folk to think was a made of mind. I will never, ever be at 100 Limit Street ever again. However, Sister Sue, the songwriter lets us know that we got a long, long way to go. And we have to realize that no matter what comes our way as we minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, we got to keep pressing our way forward. And if we keep pressing, it's going to work out in your faith, brother. I'm here on today to let you know that we must have a made-up mind to serve Jesus. And that does not mean that life is going to throw you easiness. Things are going to get hard and things are going to get harder as we press our way forward. But I want you to understand this servant principle. That we cannot let these negative influences and situations 
hold HMBC back. Are y'all with me on today? We have to allow God to keep equipping us yes. and fueling our desire for the greater in him. All right. And we have to have a made of mind in spite of what we go through yes. to give our best effort Amen. even when we don't want to. Hallelujah. Sister Molly, we have to give our best effort yes, even when it's not popular among our friends. We have to move according to the will of Almighty God. All right, yes, Lord. And we must move in excellence. Yes. My brothers and my sisters, you see the state that the world is in. Yes, this is not the time, Brother Todd, to give a half hearted effort. Yes. It's not the time. To allow unimportant things to hold us back. Yes, Lord. But now is the time that we give God our all when it comes to loving Him, yes. worshiping Him, and loving one another. Yes. Let me say this. As we look at the negative influences and the situations, if we're real with ourselves, Mother Wright, they don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. But even though we may have hard times, and if you're not having hard times right now, you will. My brothers and my sisters, we must stay engaged. We must stay connected to the true vibe. All right. And we must be committed even when we talk about Where? even when folks are trying to throw us off our game with misdirection. Where? And we must keep on pressing keep on and keep on working yes. towards the overflow. Yes. We can't allow anything to get us glad yes, to keep us from what God has for us. Yes. And for what God has for us yeah. to do. Right. Tell your name, ain't no stopping the nap. No we are on the move. The gospel. Well, according to Matthew. All right. As we know, is the first of the four New Testament narratives recounting the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Matthew, along with the gospel according to Mark and Luke, present a common view of Jesus' ministry. Therefore, they are referred to as the synoptic gospels. The gospel, according to Matthew, gives those seeking Jesus. Yes. And all of us should be seeking Jesus. Yes. It gives us a little more knowledge about him mm -hmm. and an introduction to him that is complete, well observed, and clearly informative. This narrative about Jesus tells all of us secrets that beyond a reasonable doubt Jesus of Nazareth uh -huh. the one born of a virgin yes sir Mary, all right all right now is the promised Messiah yes we know and think it was allow me to say it again that this narrative has been confirmed to be true. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it has been verified by credible verifiers Amen. that this narrative about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth that was written by the former Roman employee Matthew right. is valid. Mm -hmm. The key term 
that I want us to really look at is weight. Which is defined as moving from place, one place to another. My brothers and my sisters, for the sake of our understanding, I want us to understand the fact that gold the Smith is grammatically called an irregular verb. Mm, so right, we'll add that to that. Uh, <laughs> an irregular verb does not follow the usual rules of grammar. Because of this, wit is the past tense of God. Are y'all with me? So in the text, Jesus goes from place to place or travels to where the needy is. Well, in Gentile, in, in, in Galilee of the Gentiles. Right. If we park there for a moment, it's not our job to stay. But it is our job to go from place to place. Well, traveling to where the need is. We understand as we observe this text that Jesus is on a specific divine assignment in this particular part of his ministry. His assignment is to bring illumination to those who are sitting in darkness. It is our mandate. All right. Deacon Joe, to bring illumination to the darkness of this world. Amen. We understand that, that the mere fact that we are humans, we come and go on a daily basis. All right. We understand as we come and we go that there are obstacles along our way. If you want to go from the heart of Central Iceland to the heart of Big Shore to the Sudan's roughly nine miles per Google Maps. And it should take about 18 minutes if we are driving in a car. But see, I guarantee if we leave Central Iceland to go to Bay Shore, it's not going to take us 18 minutes. Because there are some obstacles that are already there and there are some obstacles getting ready to fall in line as we prepare to go. There are going to be some hindrances and some obstacles as we travel from Central Iceland to Bishop. But if we want to get to make sure, we are going to keep pressing our way until we get to our destination. If I can be so bold on today, Jesus experienced situations. And he encountered opposition along the way, but that did not stop him for following his prime objective. Those folks that were in need of illumination, that were sitting in darkness, and he didn't worry about what folks said about him. He didn't worry about the potholes in the road. He didn't worry about whether the air condition was on. But Jesus kept pressing his way. 
even in the midst of the noise, even in the midst of the opposition. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. There are going to be distractions. Mm. There's going to be opposition. Uh -huh. Remember, say, there are going to be trials. Yes, there are going to be people, multitudes. And we may pass mistakes that folk are going to try to hold against us. Yeah. But the mandate is not to stop. The mandate is to keep pressing because we cannot allow anything to keep us from completing our divine assignment. Come on, come on, come on. All right. We must understand that the mandate is for us to go from place to place. That means that we must be willing no matter how we feel, to travel to where the need is. Right. We must be willing to do what needs to be done to bring illumination, that means light, yeah. All right. to the dark places of this world. The, design, the divine assignment is for us to be equipped yes. and equip others mm -hmm. yes. to bring illumination to those sitting in the land of the shadow of death. Yes. Okay. There will be struggle but our progress will not and shall not be hindered. We will experience brokenness, but our progress will not and shall not be hindered. Sometimes we may find ourselves engaging ministry on a lonely road, but our progress will not and shall not be hindered. As time moves on, yeah. our health may fail us. All right. But our progress, yeah. even in the midst of deteriorating health, will not and shall not be hindered. There will be those who try to make us look incompetent as we do our best. Amen. To take the gospel to those who are lost. Without right. progress, will not and shall not be hindered. I simply want you to declare one today when folks try to come against you, when situations come down your street, that ain't no stopping us now. Because we are on the move. Ain't no stopping us now because we got that through. All right. All right. All right. With all of this said, what should be the mindset or the response of one who senses darkness in the land? All right. Yet, mindset has access by faith to the light of the world. <laughs> Number one, if we're going to end the reign of darkness in our land, uh -huh. we must position ourselves in such a way that distractions are intentionally removed and our focus is on God and God alone. We have to intentionally remove the distractions All right. from our lives. Yes. Yes. Stay right there. <laughs> we must intentionally, and sometimes, Reverend Slater, it's a struggle. It is. 
to keep our focus on him. And when we find ourselves losing our focus, come right back. But we must intentionally remove anything that stands between us and God. All right. Number two, if we're going to bring the light of life to the land of the shadow of death, we must intentionally prepare ourselves to consistently and diligently seek wisdom. Yes. All right. Tell your neighbor, stay in the word. Stay Tell your other neighbor, stay in the word. We must study to show ourselves approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, able to rightly divide the word of truth. We must be students. And let me just throw this in parenthetically. One of the greatest momentum killers is the words. We already know that. Yes. Sister Sue, we are students from the day we state our faith and to the day we take our last breath. The disciple never stops learning. Say it again, did your grand you never stop studying? And there's a difference. I'm glad you said that. Between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Amen. So number one, we gotta remove distractions. We find wisdom by being in the word. Point number three, if we're going to bring spiritual substance and nourishment to a barren land, we must allow ourselves to deliberately receive understanding. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to work. Are y'all with me? All right. We just can't talk about the Holy Spirit, but we have to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. And that simply means we got to remove the chaos of life and get it to the secret place so we can hear the voice of the master giving us understanding and imparting into us wisdom. We must internalize. That means we need to be doers, not hearers only. We have to internalize what is flowing from heaven's table. Well. And point number four, and I'm going to leave you alone. As we go, we must not allow anything All right. to break our strength. Oh, yes. Don't allow anything to hold us down oh, yes. or hold us back. Amen. We simply have to keep on moving. Keep on moving. If we're going to finish the good work that God has started in us, we must allow the Holy Spirit to use us as He sees fit. We must realize that God has blessed us yes. to be a blessing to one another. We must allow the Holy Spirit to use us as he sees fit. Sometimes the enemy tries to bring the work to a halt. Sometimes we lose focus and we can't find our way. Sometimes our colleagues abandon us and abandon the work. Sometimes relationships don't work out. They fall apart. But we must remember that we have been called to bring the light of life 
to the land of the shadow of death. Amen. We must allow the Holy Spirit to use us as he sees fit. See, the songwriter says, when I was in darkness and I could not see, that in the midst of my folly, God cared for me. He washed me in the blood of the Lamb and he has set me free when I didn't deserve it. God delivered me. My brothers and my sisters, the world can't hold us down. We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Don't bring up our past or our misguided actions because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We are not the HMBC we used to be. We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We don't talk the way we used to talk. We don't do what we used to do. We don't go where we used to go. We are not bound with what used to have us back. We don't sing the way we used to sing. We don't pray the way we used to pray. We don't worship the way we used to worship. We don't shout the way we used to shout. See, I don't preach the way I used to preach. Because we've been locked in the blood of the Lamb. And because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, ain't no stopping us now. Folks may try to clown us. Ain't no stopping us now. See, heartache is inevitable. But ain't no stopping us now. Slander is right around the corner. Ain't no stopping us now. Harsh talk, it will come our way. Ain't no stopping us now. False accusations, they do exist. Declare, ain't no stopping us now. Backstabbers, always trying to take your place. Ain't no stopping us now. See, the road is rough, and the going gets tough. And the hills, they get hard to climb. My sister Patty, I started out a long time ago. And there ain't no doubt in my mind. HNBC had you decided to make Jesus your choice. See, I made bad choices. But see, today, I choose Jesus. I've had some good things. But now, I choose Jesus. I've had some weary days. But now, I choose Jesus. I've said some things that I shouldn't say. But now, I choose Jesus. See, I went some places that I should not have gone. But now, I choose Jesus. Why? Because God said his son. They call him. Jesus, he came to love, he came to forgive, he bled and died to buy our pardon, it be great, is there to prove my Savior lives, we won't give up because the Savior lives, we will go boldly because the Savior lives, we will teach the truth about Jesus because our Savior lives. We will preach the gospel in the middle of the darkness because our Savior lives. We will walk circumspectly in the land of the shadow of death because our Savior lives. No more tightening. No more backbiting. No more excessive anger. Because I was saying he lives. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All things are gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living. Simply because he lives. He can jump. We can keep going. Because he lives. We grow stronger. Because he lives. We are protected. We are
are prepared. We are guided. Simply because our Savior lives. We will be wiser and grow in our understanding. Simply because he lived. We will be equipped and equip one another. Because he lived, we will be efficient. We will be effective. We will be concise. And we will be consistent. Why? Because by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story of how we've overcome. Do I got five overcomers in the sanctuary today? And we'll understand it better by and by. Ain't no stopping us now. We are on. So what should be the mindset of one who senses darkness in the land, yet knows they have access by faith to the light of the world? Point number one, remove distractions. Uh -huh. Point number two, allow, allow the Holy Spirit to impart wisdom. And if we're going to bring spiritual substance yeah. and nourishment into the barren land, we have to allow ourselves to deliberately receive understanding. Mm. Well. And last but not least, we must not allow anything to break our stride. We got to keep moving. I like the way they put it. Ain't no stopping us down. Amen. HMBC no stop. We're on the move. Ain't no stopping us now. Because we got a Holy Ghost group. Amen. <laughs> Hymn number 325. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Summer skies and high tip. Often see the price of time. 